Hey everyone, this is Travis Likens from Token Nerd Podcast, and I'm here today to tell you something about sponsorship. That's right, Token Nerd now has a sponsor. The fine folks at TenaciousToys.com, your source for designer toys, pop vinyl, original art, and more, are now our sponsor. And guess what? As a part of that, you can get 10% off your next order at TenaciousToys.com by entering the code TOKEN10 at checkout. That's right, 10% off. And not only are they giving you this code, they're also going to be sponsoring many of our token nerd giveaways in the next coming months. So make sure to follow us at token underscore nerd on Instagram to catch our latest giveaways. Hey everybody, welcome to Token Nerd Podcast, where we ramble on about geeky things, ranging from Batman to pop figures to Star Wars. I'm Anthony Pettiford. And I'm Travis Likens. All right, folks. Well, we're here for, well, this is one of the first times that we uh, said, hey, the movie's coming out, we're going to review it, and we actually did it within the time period of the movie coming out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the movie we're talking about is Doctor Strange. Uh, this is the latest Marvel movie. Uh, to my notes, this is the 14th Marvel movie to come out. Um in this like series of Marvel movies, yeah, in this series of which you know, let's take a moment to realize that they haven't missed the fence very many times. They've, yeah, I can't think of a single. Well, people say Iron Man two, Iron Man two, Iron Man three is why I didn't like, but like you know, it was still cool. Yeah. Uh, but no, so here we are with the next movie. This one is the first real jump to magic. We had Thor, but they kind of said Thor stuff is more like an alien thing. Uh, Thor. Uh, the, the popular quote was, you may see it as magic, but we call it science. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, we came to Doctor Strange, which is about the Sorcerer Supreme. Uh, just before we dive into it um, and do our pros and cons, just an overall thought. So, Travis, what did you think overall about the movie going in um, before seeing it? So your thoughts just looking at it. Are you indifferent on the fence like you normally are? The, the visuals were really, really good. Um, generally I'm a anti CG guy, but this was done really, really well. Um, and they used practical when they could and, uh, CG when it was appropriate. And, um, as far as the story, uh, story line, you know, smoothly went through kind of an origin type story, um, which I found interesting. I thought there was a comment made a while back that Marvel was kind of kicking the boot on the, the origin story, but yeah. they kind of, uh, that's strictly what this was at the, at the beginning. Mm hmm um i thought the character arc um was somewhat believable in a you know in a far as a uh magic movie could be <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know and um the rejection of you know kind of taking on this going from being a man of science to a man of i guess faith you would say mm -hmm. um i thought that was somewhat that's believable. really a way to put it a man of faith yeah so like science to faith type thing i thought that that went really well um and um as far as like a villain, we can talk about that later, I guess. So, um, this was kind of an interesting villain situation. Yeah. So um, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> uh, but my overall thoughts were I agree with a lot of the things you said. Uh, it was cool that, you're right, there were practical effects, but there was also a level of what we thought was going to be this serious movie because Benedict Cumberbatch, he has humor, but he's not known for being a funny man. Yeah. Um, like I've seen inter like I think it's kind of funny. I've seen him on uh different shows for when he's talking about like Sherlock and um uh what was the other movie he did? Um oh shoot. Um Sherlock and what was the one where he was uh oh shoot. Enigma, the Enigma. Okay. Sorry, I had a thing, I was like the Riddler, Edward Enigma, got it. Um <laughs> <laughs> But no, uh they were talking in this thing and like he would tell a joke and in real life he's not funny. Yeah. And so I kinda thought that was funny in this movie. Uh, he would make a joke, and sometimes people would laugh if they worked for him, but otherwise, we're like, yeah, it's not very funny. Um, <laughs> your, del your delivery is not great, dude. <laughs> but overall, you know, for being, um, and we'll get into the pros and cons, but this was a movie that had a lot of tension because we had Tilda Swinton as the Ancient One, who was portrayed as, in the comics, originally as a uh, like an Asian uh, yeah. person. That's not Tilda Swinton, I think, is it right? No, you can say that. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, you know, they replaced him with Tilda Swinton, and, uh, you know, I didn't hate it. I yeah. was. I was very against it. I was like, you know, because I don't you like... You fell into the hype. Yeah, well, 
Yes, I did. I, I, I'm not <laughs> saying, but I did. You know, I just wasn't for it. Um, I thought I thought her hair looked a lot better in the in the actual movie than in the original previews. <laughs> no, like the it kind of looked like a bulge cap in the preview. Like oh. it must have did some like. Okay, so that was a joke because there was no hair to. No, no, it. no. Like it kind of you kind of like could see kind of like the cap a little bit in the preview. Yeah, but I feel like the cool thing was they, I think they really went in covered and it with it. scars, yeah. like where it laps. Uh, you see scars on the back yep. of her head. Um, but no, I think every character in this movie brought it. Um, oh, I was trying to talk to uh, Addison, the attachment movie fan, about it, where we were saying, normally with movies, like I loved Captain America Civil War, but there were like points where you're like, it kind of dulled out. Yeah. Um, or there were flashbacks, and I loved the fact there were no flashbacks in this one. Um, uh, because like you said, it's very linear. It didn't yep. cut out. You know, it stayed right on its timeline. <laughs> sort of. Sort of stayed on a timeline. Yeah. Um, but there was, you know, every moment was worth it. I was in each moment. And when there was humor, there was humor. When it was serious, it was serious. When it was spectacle, you were blown away. Um, especially the, the, the acid trip that he takes for like 10 minutes. Spoiler. So worth it. It's not <laughs> even a spoiler. Everyone knows it's coming. Spoilers. Um, Spoilers. <laughs> but I, I, I had, after a friend of mine had went to see the 10 minute sneak peek. And while he was there, he said, hey, just a heads up. Don't and I don't anyway, but like he's like in general, people shouldn't smoke weed, shouldn't trip on anything when they go see this movie because <laughs> it's gonna blow your mind. And they said I wouldn't see it after taking a cough drop. <laughs> um, and with that said, let's move on to the pros and cons because spoilers, know, yeah, spoilers <laughs> included. You know, you you can't really come to this kind of review and expect no spoilers. Yeah, but I feel like it's like the law of the land these days that you, you have, have to, to say call it, it out multiple yeah. times over and over again. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure our seven fans aren't going to be offended. <laughs> okay, seven fans. Spoilers. All right. Uh, so, Travis, pros and cons. Or just give me the pros. So Just give me the pros. Yeah. <laughs> we give don't want to hear the bad give me things. five really, like, highlights for you about this movie. Cumberbatch. Yeah. Number one. He did a really good job portraying Doctor Strange, in my opinion. I don't mm-hmm. know that much about the character. Um, I've always kind of read him in a supporting role to other uh, storylines, generally. Um, I'm not, like the expert on the character by no means. Yeah. So I just want to point that out. So <laughs> I think from my perspective of Doctor Strange, he portrayed him very well. Two, the visual like flipping and turning of the worlds and like the constantly moving backgrounds. Um, to me, that was, it was done and executed really, really well. Um, and while you knew it was CG, it wasn't like offensively CG mm-hmm. as in, oh my God, this is CG. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, God, that looks like really bad CG. So I'm going to say that was a really good pro. Um, the Cumberbatch McAdams, like, relationship. Was very believable. Yeah, it was very believable. I like that. And that's not something you usually get from, like, a Marvel movie, like, where you're like, mm-hmm. oh, like, the relationships are really good. No, I felt like that was a really well done storyline. Yeah, I don't want to interrupt you, but, like, you're right, because it wasn't a normal, like, this person longed and like loved this person so much. No, like she was like, I'm done. And he like was cut him off, like cut him off completely <laughs> for a year. Emails, d- yeah. d- 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 no reply. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked the um, library guy, which was named Wong. 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 Uh, yeah. Benedict, yeah, Benedict Wong is yeah. the character, or I, actor's name. I liked him and how he was like, taking his role very seriously mm-hmm. and then the joke with like Beyonce and all that <laughs> because like you, so you're just Wong right and he's like makes all these jokes about people with only one name yeah to like share Beyonce like, uh, he's more like well, than people find me funny do they work for you give me the book <laughs> I thought that was a really good a bunch of really good interactions and then the um scene in New York when they're in the building and battling the um whatever his name is the guy with the eyes oh um oh uh it's um dormammu yeah well no not dormammu he's dormammu is the like guy in the space yeah sorry so the that. other guy oh uh mad mickelson's character yep. it was like um Asilius? Asilius? Something, yeah something like Asilius. that yeah i thought that was a really cool um fighting scene i guess you would say like yeah. where they're kind of bouncing through all the relics and stuff and how he finds his cape and everything so i thought that was really cool. i did like how that whole fight came together um but to jump onto my cons or my cons my pros <laughs> like, man he ain't got no con- ain't he ain't got jump. no pros um the fight scenes were 
breathtaking. Um, even the first one when uh, uh, the ancient one takes on uh, 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 Silius and his followers. Yeah. And they, you know, people are like, so it's like the clock, the clock years are turning and people are falling into the building yeah. <laughs> and being crushed, I assume. Uh, and then when it turns over, like they had like 10 people with them. And when it finally turned, only like two people dropped. You're like, oh, yeah. five people just died. Um, but when uh, Cassilius took on and tried to take, I think it was the New York's uh, Sex and Sanctorium, Sanctorum, and it was just Doctor Strange and the cape. Yep. Uh, reminded me a lot of Aladdin's rug. Yeah. And it was just cool how it wasn't like a pet, like a dog would. Like, yep. you know, sometimes you feel like, like, um, you know, it like obeys him and it like kind of, he has pets or whatever, but no, it was just like, you know, pooped in, protected him when it needed to do. And I thought that was a really cool feature. I don't read Doctor Strange regularly yeah. um, when he's not in like comics or animated movies. And I like the fact that the cape, you know, I wouldn't say had a personality, but had a function. Like, yeah. you know, a punch came. So I made it for the fact that Doctor Strange doesn't know how to fight. Yeah. Um, it also, like, choked that guy out pretty heavy. Too. Yeah, it could do its own thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I liked how, uh, for me, uh, I we go butchering a name. It's uh, Chewy Ejiofor. Boom, got right the first time. <laughs> Who played uh, Mordu. Um, loved it. Uh, I knew from comics and movies, and, you know, just playing the games, because in uh, uh, Ultimate Ali- uh, Avengers Ultimate Alliance, he was a villain in that one, one of the main villains. And I knew he was going to be a villain, ultimately. But the entire time, you're like, no, 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 no. Just be friends. Be, work together. <laughs> um, just, I, you know, thought the chemistry between the two of them was really good. Uh, you mentioned Wong. Phyllis Winton. I really liked her in this role. Uh, yeah. Because she, they mentioned that she, um, relentless, unforgiving, but kind. Mm-hmm. And I felt like that was something that she portrayed. Like she wasn't, you know, she was kind of nurturing, but at the same time, there was the scene where she, uh, Doctor Strange can't open a portal, and she opens one, leaves him at like the top of the Alps or something. It was and Mount she, Everest. Mount Everest, and she said, "Yeah, you'll <laughs> die in like two minutes," and leaves him. And then she's like sits there and waits. And when Mordo comes up and says, "What, what, what are you doing?" She's like, he, "He'll make it back. He'll make it back." He goes, "No, not again." <laughs> As if this is not the first time that they've left someone at the peak yep. uh, to die. So I love that. Um, thought that the the acid trip that he took, not the really acid trip, but the astro trip. Yeah. Um, Basically showing him that out of body experiences are possible. Yeah. Um, which I'm pretty sure we saw the uh, micro dimension or the microverse, whatever they called it in Ant Man, where when he shrank down to uh, nanoverse, I forget. Uh, but when he's at the smallest level, he's in that realm. And uh, I think I'm pretty sure we saw that when he was going through all those different uh, loops. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like that. And then finally, um, yeah, because there's a shot where he is like falling through holes, but then ultimately falls into his own eye. But like when he hits the uh, pupil, it like sinks into it and he has to grab onto like your retina. And I thought that was really cool. Um, and my last pro is Mad Nicholson. I thought his villain character, uh, Cassilius, was, you, you know how we always have, like, Loki, who was not really a villain? You uh-huh. know, he was just, he was looking for attention. Well, here's a guy who didn't want to die. Like, his motives for it, I didn't feel like were evil, but he was willing to make sacrifices that, because these people, these sorcerers are not not heroes. Yeah, they they do what they have to do to keep um, time and space together. Yep. And so him and his followers were trying to, you know, have some really bad makeup. I I thought the cl- I, thought <laughs> I didn't cool. like the I didn't like the eye uh, makeup. I thought it was more like the idea that so the demon not demon but the evil power they had couldn't be concealed in their body, so it was cracking through. So the more they used it, the more they were cracking. Yeah, I thought that was cool looking. Uh, but no, I I think for the first time. In all the Marvel movies, because that's the la- that's the thing they lacked, were having um, good villains. I, was, I think Dawamu, however you say his name, Dawamu, Doram, du- <laughs> Dawamu, Dawamu, whatever his name is. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like he was kind of wasted. <laughs> well, I I agree. And I don't agree. So, um, he normally has this look to him where he's like on fire, but 
I think they're going to, for the villain that they're going to have in Thor Ragnarok, the two of them would look too similar. Yeah. So they had to really make him. And plus, you're already going to see a giant monster in Thor. Yeah, but I think he's like, not as in what he looks like he was wasted. I think he was wasted in the fact that, okay, I'm going to annoy you for a few minutes. He's supposed to be like the most menacing person, supposedly. Oh, see, but I didn't take it for a few minutes. I took it that he was there for years. I know, but I mean, like, in the movie, though, it's just kind of like, oh, this this humongously menacing guy, they're going through these loops over and over again, and then he just, you know. Well, I liked it because it was. <laughs> Bargains. <laughs> yeah, but it's a being who doesn't comprehend time. Yeah. So, I, like, you think it's wasted? I thought it was clever because it was like, you know, this is something that could not be stopped. The only thing that's stopping yeah. him from entering our world was like three symptoms, but he's conquered everything else. And the only thing to beat him is to, you know, bargain with him. Yeah. So you're, I could see what you're saying. It kind of was wasted. Um, uh, I wonder if we'll see him again. Oh, yeah. definitely. Well, he says no because he took the bargain. He'll never come back. But I right? feel like uh, Mordo, who will end up being Baron Mordo, will, yeah. will do something to prevent that. Yeah. All right. So any other cons you got? Um, cons. Pros and cons and pros and cons. <laughs> <laughs> um, cons. As far as cons, I, See, I'm just not that interested in Doctor Strange, I guess. So the that's con- not that's like a personal con, I guess. That's not really a con as in a diss to the movie. It's just for me, this kind of ranks with like Thor. Where it's just I'm not terribly interested in what he's doing. I would rather just see him do his thing alongside other people. Yeah, so I could see you saying so, but based on the movie though, like would you still rank it higher than Thor? Or I would rank care for the character. I I would rank it higher than Thor just because I think Thor is hard to follow. Mm -hmm. Like I felt like that movie jumps around a lot. Yeah. It's been a while since I've seen it, but when I did see it, I watched I know I saw it twice and both times I felt like this is kind of jumpy. Yeah. And I know it's because they were bouncing between um Asgard and Earth, correct? That yeah. was the first one, right? <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, that kind of uh-huh. just Thor for me is my least favorite one. But that's just because I personally don't like the character that much. Okay. So. Um, I thought it was great. Oh, coming from cons. I thought it was great. Was that great. was my pr- that was all my con. Cons, all the cons were it was just too good. Too I'm gonna good tell you. Marvel. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you about some great cons of this movie. <laughs> I have the greatest cods, okay? The <laughs> best cods. Um, this con is going to be great. Man. <laughs> this con is going to be great. <laughs> um, but w- w- I guess one thing that bugs me is for a con was that Chewie Ejiofor and Benedict Cumberbatch were the, were the duo. Mm-hmm. And here we are again with another. Cause I've heard people talk about how Marvel is repeating itself with the, the hero's journey, but that's the story. Like, the hero's journey is kind of a template. Read, if you've ever read comic books, they're generally about a hero's yeah. rise and then potential fall and then rise again. <laughs> I know we really don't we don't say that this is a like the genre. There's no there's no like superhero movie as a genre, but like that's what it is. Yeah. And that's well, the, the, and the source material they're based on tend to have that same thing where there's some guy who's not a superhero somehow gets some sort of power. How he deals with that power and then how he controls that power is generally the beginning of, you know, the first 20 issues or something, you know, yeah. like how he becomes the superhero he is, is generally the beginning of the story. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you're going to do a movie, unless you're going to assume that everybody knows everything about Dr. Strange, you can't just start at issue 21. Yeah. <laughs> and um, in this particular case, with Doctor Strange, I don't think enough people know enough about him, specifically outside the comic book realm, which, remember, these movies are pulling in people from all walks of comic book knowledge. Yeah. You couldn't do a start at F- F- issue 21 Doctor Strange movie. Like, mm-hmm. it's not possible because you have to have the origin. Yeah. Because people just don't know him. So, you know, do I think this is going to stand out over all the movies of the year? No. No. But of superhero movies? Yes. Um, and fantasy movies in general, I yeah. think it does. It's better than uh, Batman vs Superman. Oh, definitely. <laughs> um, That's how we judge the badness yeah. of the movie right now. <laughs> um, we but, give it four Batman vs Supermans. <laughs> uh, but my issue was that Marvel seems to have like the hero and their black sidekick or black best friend. Uh-huh. You have Iron Man and Rhodey. You have uh, Captain America and Falcon. Yeah, that's kind of a thing. Ant Man it? It wasn't a black guy. It was a you know, Hispanic man, but you know, we are still in the same uh, minority. And a Russia, and a Russia man. Uh, 
Oh yeah. Oh, but we had. But there was a black guy. Yeah, yeah. there it is. <laughs> we almost gave him a pass. Um, so that is kind of a formula for them, isn't it? Yeah, and I, I can't wait till we have Hawkeye, and it's like there, Hawkeye, and Black Widow, and then you find out that Hawkeye has a black guy who just like <laughs> holds his arrow. I'm the quiver. <laughs> the quiver. <laughs> um, so that that kind of bugged me. And see, that's the cool thing is I can't think of anything that I didn't like. Um, one issue which isn't bad but i don't know how this movie places in the marvel universe so in captain america uh winter soldier there's a point where they're talking to uh one of the one of the hydra undercover agents and he says mm-hmm. yeah you know we've been watching four people tony stark bruce banner uh stephen strange so does this take place so when he referenced stephen strange was he t- referencing him as like a good doctor or was they re- re- were they referencing him as like the sorcerer supreme so did this movie take place before um, Winter Soldier? But then we had the post credit scenes, and we don't know when that took place, but that will be a different part of the MCU. I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm suspecting that's leading up to the next movie. Well, <laughs> yeah, I know that. I was just wondering when this movie, when all this action took place. Yeah. Did it take place? Yeah, they didn't really give you... That's one thing with all these uh, Marvel movies. They don't really give you, like, a, a time frame. Um, you can kind of assume that Captain America 1, Captain America 2, Captain America 3, that's the order. But where some of those fall in is not necessarily defined. Yeah. Um, so I guess those were my issues. Uh, or those my <laughs> issues. Those were my cons. Um, but what I think we should really now talk about is that the post credit scenes. There were two. Okay. Um, first one was funny. It was Doctor Strange sitting talking to with an empty beer thing yeah, that kept refillable. filling. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it takes that refillable mug to a whole new level. But what I thought was cool was it was yeah, leading into the next into Thor Ragnarok. So yep. Doctor Strange going to show up or play a small cameo part? I suspect he might be the uh, Silver Server character for Planet Hulk. So somebody has to bring them back to Earth. Oh, that's true. So he could open like a portal and bring them back. So he drops them off and then picks them up. Like you have to yep. be back here in three months or in three days, yep. and I'll pick you up. So like he would have the ability using his little uh, ring thing. <laughs> uh, what is it called? Um, a sliver? A sl- something with an F. I don't remember. <laughs> We're doing so good with names, we can't remember items. So. Yeah. So like he could easily be the gateway to drop them off mm-hmm. and take them back. Yeah. So. But um, I think it was cool how so. In the movie, obviously, the, the ancient one dies, Graham Order leaves, and so Doctor Strange and Doctor Strange and Wong, Wong who is his aide in the comics, uh, the two of them are like in a kind of clean house. They're kind of putting everything together, and I think it's cool how you see Doctor Strange is like, you know, I like, you know, he's not the Sorcerer Supreme. I want to point that out because I don't, I don't think they ever proclaim him to be, unlike they do in the other incarnations, but. He's talking to Thor and he says, I want to, you know, I like to keep an idea of who's coming in and out or who's not from this realm. And uh, so you hear some say, so it looks like wizard men. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so it, it's kind of cool. So there's the broadening. So they're aware of each other. Yeah. So the Sorcerer Supreme was aware of, you know, Asgard. And Asgard's aware of the Sorcerer Supreme. Yeah. I um, thought that was cool for the first um, ending. And then the second one is uh, in the movie, the guy who ultimately leads Stephen Strange to. Um, I keep going to call it Shangri-La. <laughs> Shangri-La. Um, but it's Shum- not. Shumanga. I don't remember. <laughs> the, let's see, the Ancient One's headquarters. Yep, yep, that um, place. Uh, so this guy leads him there. He is like paralyzed from the waist down, and he uses his own magic so he can walk. And he learned how to do it, and then he left. He didn't want to fight in that world. So we have Baron Mordo, who comes in and then takes his power. Yep. Now his drive is that the world has too many. Sorcerers, and he's going to start to cut them out because people aren't using the the power for the intended purpose. Is how we see. Because he's angry because yeah. the ancient one you find out he's been alive for deck or centuries. Pull him from the dark side. The dark side. <laughs> <sighs> can't trust anybody these days. You can't. <laughs> well, uh, we didn't cover absolutely everything that happened in this movie because you know, even though it's a spoiler review, we want you to see the movie. Have but uh, have an opinion for yourself of what you thought happened. Um, but we just kind of want to throw our ideas and our thoughts out there. Um, so definitely go out and check out uh, Doctor Strange, Doc 
Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. These um, hands. These <laughs> hands. <laughs> I could have did better. That was funny. Like the only doctor that could have saved him was himself. Yeah. Um, but before we leave, so um out of five uh magic hands. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get? Five tokens is what we're supposed to use. Yeah. So um, five magical tokens. What do you give Doctor Strange? I'm gonna give it four. Four. Oh. Yeah. I think it I think it's pretty good. It's just not my favorite movie. Okay. Uh, I'm giving it a four and a half. I mean, it like I don't want to call it perfect. That would be yeah. a five, but I mean, it was it was good. It was good. I enjoyed. Good. I didn't have a moment like we had a some movies. We have a hard like when we did Batman v Superman. We had a hard time uh, saying, "Oh, I liked this." We had to justify why we liked it. Yep. Now we're trying to find the reasons that we didn't like it. Yeah, it was kind of like I didn't leave there super excited or happy like kind of what i felt after ant-man or after um civil war i was like excited it's like oh yeah, yeah, yeah but i wasn't like oh that sucked <laughs> after i left either so <laughs> it's kind of like i was in the middle and um but it's not a three level movie to me it's it, the production value and not, everything not, is way IMAX. better no i saw it in standard all right same here i i mean uh we're gonna go see an imax but does this rank into your top five Marvel movies? Um, no, it doesn't. Not for me. No. Would it make top ten? Yeah, it would make top ten. Well, I guess I mean, there's only fourteen. Yeah, movies. there's only fourteen. And it's not gonna be Iron Man two, three, or Hulk or Thor. <laughs> or <laughs> my Thor, Thor two. So I guess it's 10 my or Hulk nine. might creep into my top ten. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, this is for me definitely my top five. Um, you say that every time though. Well, yeah, because it keeps it keeps getting added on. Like I'm finding better things. Uh, like. Pretty not, soon, really awesome movies are going to be like number eight for you. Well, you know, when you when you're getting good product and you you know <laughs> good things to choose from, uh, it's like pick your favorite piece of gold. There, man. But no, like for me, it goes not in order, but like Iron Man one, uh, Doctor Strange now, Ant Man, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Winter Soldier. I never my top. I like I like Civil War. I thought Civil War was cool. I just. I feel like if we went back to the the audio when we did the Civil War talk. No, I did like it, but I I did mention that I. I think you had it in your top five. Yeah, it was my top five. It's been bumped off. <laughs> yeah, there. So, trying to kind of catch in my own words. All right, folks. Well, we're gonna call an end to our uh, Doctor Strange review. Um, you can check us out at Token underscore Nerd for Instagram and Twitter, and Token Nerd zero zero on Facebook. Uh, Travis over here is on the UVD Wiki wrap up. Yep. And you can check us out over on Instagram or Twitter at Urban Vinyl Daily or by going over to UrbanVinylDaily.com and checking out what we're doing every day. But are you a Funko Pop collector? I am. Are you? You need to head over to our sponsor, TenaciousToys.com, and uh, grab some, um, you know, many pop figures that they have in their store. And uh, while you're there, if you want to use the coupon code TOKEN10 at checkout, you'll receive 10% off your Funko order. So. Yeah, and it's uh, very convenient. And But with Tenacious Toys being our sponsor, we are also giving a having a, a giveaway currently. Uh, this will go up until, uh, I believe it is Thursday. Uh, my calendar is set for December. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, our, we have a um, contest going away until the 11th. Um, we will be giving away a... Uh, Spider Gwen figure. Yes. And uh, all you have to do for that is um, like us on any of our social media accounts. Uh, so like us, follow us, um, reshare the post, and have a uh, U.S. mailing address. Yeah. So if you head over to the social networks there, and you'll see a picture of Spider Gwen with some instructions on it. That's what you're going to want to re retweet, repost, re and use the whatever. hashtag Token Gwen. Yes. Don't forget that part. Yeah, if you if you miss that hashtag, we'll we will not find see it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, the free shipping and everything to you guys, you'll have it within the week. Not a bad deal. Yeah, pretty cool. And if you don't want Spider Gwen, like you said, check out tenaciousToys.com for other Funko needs, or you know, heck, there are other designer toys that are there that are pretty damn awesome. Yeah, you just might not get ten percent off. But. Yeah, not those. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. As always, I'm Anthony, and I'm Travis. Stay spicy, my friends. Thank you.